In contrast to the ad hoc and hybrid courts or tribunals, which have a limited temporal and geographical jurisdictions, the International Criminal Court, the ICC, is entrusted with a universal jurisdiction and is thus potentially able to respond to violations occurring anywhere. That said, Article 12 of the ICC statute imposes several preconditions on the ICC, based on nationality and territory, for it to be able to exercise its jurisdictions. As a general rule, the ICC's jurisdiction is subject to ratification of its statute by states. When becoming party, states automatically accept the jurisdiction of the ICC over the crimes falling within its competence. Article 12.2 of the ICC statute determines the jurisdictional preconditions that the state, on the territory of which the crime is committed, territorial state, or the state of which the person accused of the crime is a national, state of nationality of the accused, must be party to the statute or have accepted the ICC's jurisdiction by making a declaration pursuant to Article 12.3 of the ICC statute. Such a declaration may be made at any time from the entry into force of the statute and must be expressed, unequivocal and precise as to the crimes or situation it applies to. We will see, however, that these two preconditions do not apply when the Security Council refers a situation to the ICC pursuant to Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. Let's begin by analyzing the two potential jurisdictional grounds, territory and nationality. Territorial jurisdiction. As emphasized by the former ICC judge Hans Peter Kohl, the principle of territorial jurisdictions entails that if a crime which falls within the competence of the ICC is committed by an individual in the territory of a state party to the ICC statute, the ICC will be competent over this crime, regardless of whether the alleged perpetrator is a national of this territorial state or an alien national of another state party or of a non-state party, and regardless also of where the alleged offender may be, whether in the territorial state or in the territory or custody of another state, whether state party or not. Some states, such as the United States, have vigorously criticized the principle of territorial jurisdictions. These states consider it to be a violation of the fundamental principle of treaty law according to which only states that are parties to a treaty are bound by the terms of this treaty. In that regard, it should be first recalled that the principle of territoriality is firmly anchored in the domestic law of many states and is thus an undisputed legal basis for criminal jurisdiction. Moreover, as put forward by Hans Peter Kohl, the argument raised by the United States runs against the fact that the ICC statute constitutes a collective reaction of its state parties against the breach by an individual of its obligation ergaumness. Nationality of the accused. This principle entails that the ICC will be competent over crimes committed by state party nationals regardless of whether the alleged perpetrator is located in another state and whether this state is a state party or not. The nationality criterion is an uncontroversial jurisdictional basis well grounded into the domestic law of many states. Even the common law states, which mainly apply the principle of territorial jurisdictions, accept the nationality principle for the most serious crimes. It should also be noted that Article 12.3 of the ICC statute authorizes a non-state party to make an ad hoc declaration by which it accepts the competence of the ICC for a specific situation. In other words, Article 12.3 broadens the scope of the ICC statute's application by providing non-state parties the power to accept the ICC's jurisdiction on an ad hoc basis. 
the Palestinian Authority lodged such a declaration on 22 January 2009 for the purpose of identifying, prosecuting and judging authors and accomplices of crimes within the jurisdiction of the court committed in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, since June 13, 2014. At that time, however, the Palestine only had observer entity status at the United Nations and was not a, member, a non-member state. On this basis, the ICC prosecutor concluded that Palestine could not join the ICC statute or ask the court to investigate a situation. Things change, however, when on 29 November 2012, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 6719, granting Palestine the status of a non-member observer state at the United Nations. On that basis, in January 2015, Palestine accepted to the, acceded to the ICC statute and was officially welcomed as a state party in April, three months after the date of accession as required under the statute. Lastly, it is important to recall that the ICC has jurisdiction only with respect to events which occurred after the entry into force of its statute on 1 July 2002. If a state becomes a party to the statute after its entry into force, the court may exercise its jurisdiction only with respect to crimes committed after the entry into force of the statute for that state, unless that state has made a declaration accepting the jurisdiction of the ICC retroactively. However, the court cannot exercise jurisdiction with respect to events which occurred before 1 July 2002.